Can staying in the light save you from what you can't see? What happens when you catch a glimpse of God? Can what you don't know actually hurt you? All questions that we'll be answering in these three viewer submitted videos. Welcome to Hunting for Horror. First off, thank you to everyone who submitted a video for tonight's programming. And as always, I suggest you watch the original uploads of these videos before continuing this one. Please support these talented creators. Now, let's get into the scares. Our first video of the evening was suggested by 89Vanilla, and it's called Lights Out. Lights Out was uploaded 10 years ago to the Pony Smasher channel. It's 2 minutes and 41 seconds long and currently sits at 17 million views. Our video starts off by reminding us what we're watching and we're introduced to our main character, who looks like she's just off to bed. She walks to the end of the hall to switch off the light. When? Hello there! And who might you be? Gotta pay rent? She turns the light back on to get a better look at the intruder, but doing so... Causes the figure to disappear. To determine if she was just imagining things, the main character turns the light back off. And sure enough, the figure reappears. And then she starts turning the light off and on again. Like, if I had just confirmed that someone was in my house who was not supposed to be there, I would either be grabbing the nearest thing I could use as a weapon, or bolting up the front door if it was accessible. <laughs> it is kind of funny though. Red light. Yeah. Uh, green light. Uh, red light. Uh, <laughs> ah! It's not funny anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, taping down the light switch so it stays on is definitely an option. Or, and, and hear me out on this. You could leave. Our main character goes off to bed, confident that leaving the light on will keep her safe. Ill-placed confidence if you ask me, but whatever. She begins to hear creaking out in the hallway, which causes her to look towards the door, just in time to see the light go out, and this sound. Okay, now. Now is the time when you should be looking for an escape or find some way to orange- God, are you fucking eight? She peeks out from under the covers to see that the door to the hallway is now wide open. <laughs> Somehow from under her indestructible blanket, she notices that her only source of light is beginning to dim. <laughs> she properly plugs the light back in and then hears the sound of the whole light being turned back on. which gives her the courage to pull down her tactical blanket and survey the room. Looks like she's avoided her assailant, and she's going to be just fine. <laughs> oh boy. Who could have seen that coming? I actually remember watching this one when I was a kid, and it definitely scared me back then. But how does it hold up now? Is it scary? Yeah, I'd, I'd say decently so. The setup of an entity who's only visible in the dark is fantastic. The intro sequence gives us a nice jump scare and serves to help build tension throughout the rest of the video. The sound design helps a lot as well. The decision to have no dialogue really allows us to focus on the creaks and growls throughout the video. But some of the decisions made by the main character take me out of it a couple times. At no point does she seem to ever think Oh yeah, I should probably get the fuck out of here. It just reminds me of the goofy poor decisions a lot of the characters from the 80s slashers would make. But overall, I'd say the video was well done and I'll place it in B tier. Our next video comes from our Discord, submitted by Ale.10, and it's called Portrait of God. Portrait of God was released one year ago to the Dylan Clark channel. It's 7 minutes and 30 seconds long and currently sits at 4.7 million views. The video begins with the Bible verse, specifically Exodus 33:20, No man shall see me and live. Which leads me to believe that God is a lot like the ugly barnacle, who was so ugly that everyone died. The end. 
Normally I think starting anything off with a quote is a little bit pretentious, but not only does this set expectations for the video itself, but also harkens back to the source material it's based off of. So I think it's justified here. We seem to be in some kind of presentation room where we get a reminder of what we're watching and we're introduced to the main presenter slash character, Mia Riley. She's timing her presentation on a painting called, you, you, you wanna guess? I'll give you, go ahead, try, I'll give you a second to guess. It's Portrait of God. Yeah, yeah, there it is, there it is! Huh. I wonder if that timer will be important later. Mia sets up the video with a big question. What does God look like? Morgan Freeman. That is honestly what pops into my head whenever I think about the Christian slash Catholic God. She then reaches the slide with the actual painting on it. Uh, Mia, you, you sure you got the right slide there? What do you see? Um... If the answer is nothing, if it just looks black to you, don't worry, that's what I see too. <laughs> Thank God. Apparently, even though there doesn't seem to be anything on the slide right now, there is actually something there. While most viewers see nothing, some insist they see a person in the darkness, one that they can describe and draw out with consistent details. This is a great setup. It's very urban legend-like. It reminds me a lot of the username 666 in Haunted Kleenex commercial stories. Legends that depict something in plain sight that some people happen to have some kind of experience with, while others don't. This also gets the viewer questioning if they'll see anything in the portrait, and if they'll see the same thing that seems to be accounted here. Speaking of which, what are people supposedly seeing in this painting? It's a man, or close to a man. You're wrinkled, skinny. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. a man who's wrinkled and skinny. He's smiling. He's grinning. He smiles down at us. It's, it's too wide. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm got it. Okay, smile too wide for his face. But his eyes. Looking down with his eyes are big. Honestly, it's unsettling. Okay, big eyes, unsettling. I, I think I got it. Is this the man you're seeing? It's beautiful. I don't know, I'd hardly call this guy beautiful. It was a really great decision to have all of these depictions told to the audience by the people who witnessed them. You really understand the emotions that this painting imparts onto people by hearing them say it themselves. There's also a very nice duality of the painting making people feel uncomfortable while also being beautiful at the same time. The video then further gives the audience even more to question as Mia brings up these interesting points. Maybe it's just a trick of the light, maybe they're seeing something they want to see but how are their descriptions so consistent? Maybe they really are having a religious experience. Why does God appear to them and not us? Oh, damn it. Is this going to turn to one of those only the worthy can see God who must be pure of heart and free and say, oh, no, never mind, there he is, I just saw him. And he looks actually a lot like one of my thumbnails. That was a great little touch there to have a split second where the viewer can see what's in the portrait, but the character in the story can't. Real bomb under the table situation there, which you can learn more about in my video here on creating tension. Mia starts her presentation over from the beginning, going through all the talking points until she lands on the portrait again, where she takes a bit of a better look at it. And as she does, she begins to see something. Or... Someone. The figure on the screen appears to become more defined the longer Mia looks at the painting. Visibly scared by this, Mia decides to end her practice. Uh, oh hell no! Run, Mia! Get the fuck out of Dodge! <laughs> Mia is surrounded by darkness, trapped by the abyss. However, she's not alone. Her void companion seems to be getting closer, closer to Mia. Mia can't handle it. She looks away, he begins to pray. 
but it's a fruitless effort. The entity wants Mia to witness it. It stretches its mouth wide open, revealing a light. A light that captures Mia as she gazes into it. The video ends with the reveal that Mia had actually never moved from her spot. It could have been all in her head. However, that can't be entirely true, as the timer she was using lets us know that she's been standing there for over three hours straight. As she looks at the portrait of God, Mia is filled with emotion, but perhaps not the one you might expect. So, was it scary? Absolutely. I wouldn't call it the scariest thing I've ever watched, but it was definitely intriguing and well executed. I was enamored from start to finish. I loved the scene of Mia alone with the entity. Just only being able to see the two eyes out in the distance keeps the audience guessing on what could be out there, just beyond the void, and starts to get the audience asking questions. How far away is it really? Can it see me? And ultimately, is it getting closer? And also, the unanswered questions of what Mia saw in the light, and what really happened in the three hours she was just standing there, keeps the viewer thinking about it even after the video ends. I'll put that in A tier. Our last video of the evening was suggested by Joan Chilling, and it's called Conviction. Conviction was uploaded 15 years ago to the Fudio channel. It's 5 minutes and 3 seconds long, and currently sits at 56,000 views. The video begins by reminding us what we're watching and who made it, and also with a quote from H.P. Lovecraft. The oldest and strongest emotion of mankind is fear. And the oldest and strongest kind of fear is the fear of the unknown. Hey, I said the same thing in this video. I want to find the fear that affects most people. And I think I have found that fear. Xenophobia. Fear of the unknown. The video opens to a woman on the phone with a friend, and they seem to be talking about some kind of college paper that the friend is writing. Heaven is human construct or divine reward. Nice topic. The opening question, which also acts as set up the theme for the short, leads the two into further discussion about religion and the afterlife, a point that the two seem to differ on. The sooner we give up the crutch of religion, the better. No. No, I'm not being nihilistic. I I'm not being depressing. Our main character seems to be on the side of religion is bullshit, and she makes the claim that she would welcome oblivion and that living forever doesn't sound appealing. Nope. No. I, I don't want to live forever. After all the, the pain and disappointment in life, honestly, I can't think of anything that could possibly be better than oblivion. Huh. I wonder if she'll regret those words. Something worth noting up until this point is that, um, nothing's really happened. We've mainly just had shots of our main character walking around her apartment trying to convince her friend that religion is dumb. Did I write this script? Point is, so far, not much horror is happening in this horror short. Whoa, hey, one second. Why are there spooky heartbeats? What is that, a wig? Ooh, it's not a wig. Guys, I find the scary! No, I wouldn't change my mind on my deathbed. Wouldn't show much conviction now, would it? Oh, we got a setup for our ironic line, and we got the title there! Oh, I think it's about to go down! Woo! That's a Cthulhu statue! And this is a tribute to H.P. Lovecraft. The title said so. Here it comes! Huh? What the hell? I came here for a horror short. This was a short, sure. But where's the ho- <laughs> Oh, hello. Oh my god, help me! Okay, that 
that I wasn't expecting. Having the climax of the video hit in the credits. That's pretty good. Hats off to you, Fudio, for doing something legitimately unpredictable. And that being said, was it scary? Maybe a little? Pretty much the entire video is all build up. And while I think it is important to build up your scares properly, this felt like, ironically, not enough build up. I know, weird of me to say when it was basically built up for 4 minutes and 38 seconds. But the problem is that the majority of that time was spent setting up the themes of the video and not on building tension. We only got a little bit of it near the end of the video when it was revealed that something was underneath the main character's bed. I do think the video was well done and well executed, and that fake out at the end just for the scares to happen in the credits definitely earns up some points. But for tension only really being built for the last... I don't know, minute and a half of the video, that earns it a spot in C tier. That was all the videos for this evening. If you have a suggestion for a scary video, leave that in the comments or in our official Discord, link in the description. And of course, this is just what I thought. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And thank you for watching.